If you don't know who I am, that's okay. I don't know who you are either, so we're even. Okay, just to be upfront, this is gonna be an incredibly biased video because Sarah Cooper actually gave me my first ever paid comedy writing gig. That being said, if you only know Sarah Cooper from say her huge, massive, giant, viral TikTok videos. We have a situation where we're looking very strongly at sinks and showers and other elements of bathrooms. Or if you only know her from a few weeks ago when she was a guest host for the Jimmy Kimmel Show. I started this year doing a late night set at a pizza place in Jersey City. Now, here I am, hosting a late night show in a vacant house. I feel like I actually have some insight because over the last six years I've kind of had this front row seat where I've been able to kind of watch her career grow. So, here is a incredibly biased but informative breakdown of how Sarah Cooper got to where she is today doing all this crazy stuff. All right, so let's start with when I uh, met, or at least I guess digitally met, Sarah Cooper. So when I was in college, I was already writing for a while. I had written some feature films. I had, oh, there's some construction up there. I uh, written some pilots, and I was sending them out to all kinds of like agents and, and getting a ton of rejection letters and stuff like that. And I would literally stay up at night and Google paid writing gigs. And at some point, I think it was on Craigslist, I found this this website, Ula Love, was looking for writers. So. I put together a packet of some different ideas, found out Ooh I Love was like, it's kind of like a satirical version of Cosmo, which is hilarious, like the onion meets Cosmo, you know? And so I sent this writing packet to come to find out to Sarah Cooper, and she liked it, so she hired me. It was 15 bucks an article with $25 bonus if the article got more than 50 likes on Facebook. And so like, I, I thought it was awesome. Like just to be able to say I was getting paid as a writer was huge for me. Like just my self-esteem, my confidence as a writer, it was just absolutely massive. I actually went and found an old external hard drive that has some of the original like Word documents for these articles that I was sending her. So I wanna show you guys those real quick. So here's some original old school ooh la love articles I was writing for Sarah Cooper. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys, like I said, I have an old external hard drive. Let me just grab this. I actually, I was looking through it. You can actually see here, so like, let's go to my writing, articles. These are all just random like websites I would try to send stuff to. There's Ooh I Love. And here's like articles I would send to Sarah Cooper. So like, five tips for covering up your spousal abuse. It's pretty funny. So I think it's just funny that like, I have all these old articles in Word docs. This is like legit what I used to send her. <laughs> Use concealer, you big dummy. <laughs> this is so stupid. And then I was looking on like, on like Facebook, I searched Ooh I Love and you can see like, this is 2014, I'm officially a paid comedic writer. Look how many exclamation points, I was so stoked. 86 likes, got that extra $25 bonus for sure on that one. So you can see too like, there's no thumbnail here. It's because Ooh La Love, the website's shut down. So I found this archive website, which has, so this is like kind of an archived version of the website. I wish we had the actual one because the website, like that was one of my favorite parts about the website. It looked so good and so professional. Oh, here we go, Corey Wagner. Okay, so these are all the articles I wrote. That's so horrible. <laughs> that's so horrible, I can't believe. Oh, that's so messed up. Anyways, I'm telling you, I was writing some ruthless stuff. I actually used to have a poster of uh, my first article that I wrote. I like, printed out and framed it up here, but my wife hated it. She used to make me take it down whenever her mom would come visit. And also, like in, in fairness, it was like pretty gnarly stuff I was writing and uh, not appropriate for parents. But I wish I still had it, because then you could see how dope the website looked. It was a fantastic website. Anyways, what? this is dumb. I just wanted to show you that. Back to whatever the heck I'm doing. Okay, so what happened for Sarah Cooper after Ooh La Love? Well, obviously every idea that she has that she wants to write isn't gonna fit into this like niche genre of uh, satire and Cosmo. So what she'd do is she'd write these other articles or blogs and she'd post them on Medium. And one of those articles that she wrote called 10 Tricks to Appear Smart in Meetings, hilarious, check it out if you haven't seen it yet. 
went absolutely just batshit crazy viral. I still remember going on to Huffington Post one day and on the front page of Huffington Post, there's this article written by Sarah Cooper. Blew my mind, I mean, Huffington Post is huge. So I saw that and I was like, oh my God. So when she posted that article, it like I apparently overnight got 200,000 views. That was kind of the precipice for her starting her own personal website and blog page called The Cooper Review, which is super funny, definitely check that out too. And then she was able to leverage that one single article into a three book book deal. And she actually talks about how she was able to leverage that into a book deal on her uh, website. She's got an article about that on The Cooper Review, which I wanted to show you some of the stuff that she wrote in there, because I think it's kind of cool and interesting. So here, check this out. Okay, so The Cooper Review. Here we got The Cooper Review. This is the article that talks about her getting that book deal. I thought this was kind of cool. I was reading it here. I finally started to take my interest in writing more seriously. Committed myself to stick with a blog, any blog. I started Ooh La Love, that's the one I wrote for. A parody of Cosmo and other women's magazines with articles like, Will He Cheat On You a Sixth Time? Take the quiz. And even hiring a few writers. That's me. So yeah, I mainly just wanted to like, I thought it was cool that I kind of mentioned that she was hiring writers. I also think that this is a really, really good article and it's a how to turn a blog post into a book deal in 12 months. And it really breaks it down, a lot of great information. I think if you're like looking into writing, I think it's interesting to know some of this stuff. So I think it's worth checking out. Just look into it, it's awesome. My dog's waking up, I probably gotta take her out to pee. Back to whatever the heck I'm doing. So what happened after the books? Well, she had the three book book deal. She ended up writing a fourth book. The books, from what I understand, sold like pretty well. I would see friends of mine post on Facebook that they would like randomly get the book as like a Christmas present. If you check it out on Amazon, any of her books, they have great reviews. But you know, with, I feel like with creative people, especially comics and writers, you're always still looking for like the next thing. So she starts a TikTok channel and it freaking blows up. She's got over 600,000 followers on there almost 5 million likes on her videos. Not 5 million views, 5 million likes on her videos, which is absolutely insane. She was featured on Jimmy Fallon's show. And the very funny Sarah Cooper is on our show. If you don't know Sarah Cooper, she has these viral, I mean, they're amazing, TikTok videos. And it's hilarious too. All she does is take like the crazy nonsense that Donald Trump's saying, and she just takes the audio from that and lip syncs over top of it, and there's something about it that just shows just the silliness of the stuff that dude's saying, and it's just super funny watching her lip sync over it. They really are absolutely hilarious. And with her videos going viral, she's getting a lot of like really positive media attention from it, and I think that kind of helped with the next stage of her career. Sarah Cooper recently was a guest host on the Jimmy Kimmel Show. I'm also excited because for the first time ever, I have my very own sidekick. Guillermo, how are you? I'm doing good, Sarah. So tell me, how does Jimmy usually relax before the show? I think he cried for a minute. Oh, great. I do that every day. Which just absolutely blows my mind. As a kid growing up, I watched two late night TV hosts. I watched Conan O'Brien and I watched Jimmy Kimmel and I was, please don't explode. I was obsessed with both of them. I love Jimmy Kimmel, I think he's awesome. And the fact that I know somebody personally who recently hosted his show, like that just blows my mind. I mean, she got to interview freaking Ben Stiller. It's exciting for me to see you hosting this show. It's really exciting. I mean, you are my first guest ever. Like that's so crazy to me. And what a huge accomplishment. Like. As a comedian, I can't imagine. That's like one of the pinnacles of success. Boom, mind blown, that's crazy. So that's kind of my recap of her career thus far that I've been able to watch. And what are the takeaways from that? And this part's more for like comedy nerds, I guess. What would high school Corey, as like a dude who wants to write comedy and get into the comedy world, what are like the tips that I guess I'd be looking for? I think there's a huge takeaway. Like I think a lot of people can look at her right now and be like, oh wow, she really came out of nowhere. What an overnight success. We just made some TikTok videos. And that's clearly not the case. If you've watched this video, you realize that she's been hustling and working and, and I mean, she's doing stand up and she was doing sketch comedy and then she was making blogs. 
and then making the TikTok channel or and then writing the book. That all kind of turns into these little tiny steps forward until she got to where she is now. And Sarah, I know I always email you when you have something good going on and I haven't emailed you yet about the Jimmy Kimmel show. And the reason I haven't emailed you yet is because I thought it'd be more fun to make this video and rather than just like, We've never really like talked. She did, when I emailed her a link to the number six with cheese, she's like, oh, it's crazy. I never actually heard your voice before. And it's funny because all of our communication has always been through like email and stuff. So I thought this would be a more fun way to tell you congratulations. This is unbelievable. I'm always in awe of all the awesome things that you're doing. And I've said it before, but like seriously, thank you for everything. Like you helping me really was such a good confidence boost to keep me going because that was right when I was moving to Chicago so that just felt really good and was like a huge help and um, yeah so I wanted to make a little drink for you and just say cheers to your career and I'm excited to see what comes next. Keep killing it Sarah.